I'm in service and I'm talking to customers and they need other policies. Why give those policies to someone else when I know how to write them? So let me just write them. They were like, oh, I just increased 12 coverages today. And I'm like, you just literally increased more coverage than you have in your entire life. We have to get to be a little place where we have confidence in contacting people. And we have confidence in making it a point and well known that this is what we're going to be doing. All right. So this is the month of retention. And I'm excited because we're getting a lot of hits from associations, large agencies, networks, all about, can you help us with retention? So I think the hard market word, we're all a little bit sick of. And so now we're on to the next phase, which is how do we keep these? And here's my prediction, Therese and Steven. I think that once this hard market kind of comes back around that I'm going to have to probably eat a lot of crow and tell people that they are going to have to remarket accounts because mm-hmm. three, four or five years of taking rate with no actual like ability to move, people feel trapped. And when you, when clients feel trapped due to no issue of our own, then when that market breaks, they will start looking around despite relationships. So That's why we believe right now that every agency really needs to be focused on building those relationships with clients and focusing on retention so that when that happens, they come to you first and you can shop. But my fear is that if they call their agent once every three years and hear, yeah, there's no other markets, go for it. The second they can get another market, we may have a mass exodus. What do you guys think? Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. We need to keep them where they're at right now because that's really the best option. And agencies are now seeing the light where people are being canceled or non-renewed once they move or inspections come back crazy or other underlying issues happen. So we really need to leave them where they're at because there's not that many other great options out there. But we also need to be mindful as things start to settle and going into 2025, 2026, it'll now have been two, three years of client hearing the same thing and the same message, which is in their best interest, but we're going to have to then start looking again. But if we don't have a relationship, they just run away. They go find the new love. They go find the new person that makes them feel pretty and sexy. And if that's not us, we didn't do our job. That is why we have to have, it has to be our customers, BFS, and make sure that we're definitely building those relationships and that they think of us first when it comes to the insurance and just at least give us that chance where they call in and say, hey, you know, I'm worried about this. This is expensive. I want to leave. And then gives us the ability to shop it instead of them going elsewhere. Well, I also think that in this industry, what's going to potentially happen is, you know, the underwriting guidelines will loosen up from where they are today, but I don't think they're going to go back quite where we were before. (laughs) So I think that you're still going to need to get new roofs. (laughs) I think you're still going to need to do home maintenance and repair and, and some of those things. And So I think like before it was like, oh, well, you know, that's fine. We'll still do it. No big deal. And I I, I don't think we're going to go quite that far. So it is an opportunity for you to really spend time with your best clients. And so I want to open up a topic that I hear, I've heard since I got into insurance, which is, oh, we're a service agency or we're a sales agency. And it always confused me early on my career when I heard this because I was like, why would you want to be one or the other? Why couldn't you just be a growth agency and be in between? Because it was like, it seems so odd to me to be like, we're a service agency. And then I'd be like, well, what do you do for service? We call people back. <laughs> like basically what they're called. Yeah. Like basically we don't have producers. Like we're not investing heavily in marketing. Like to me, the growth agency, the service agency, you know, they believe they give good service and their own version of whatever that is, which is fine, but they're not like actively soliciting and aggressively going after new business. And then the sales agency, it's almost like, when we talk about service or retention, they're like, oh, that's the girls do that. The, gr- the girls do that. Like it's the lowest level job on the face of the planet because in their mind, all it is is changing vehicles, taking payments or doing certificates. And it's like, hold on. No, like there's a whole other side here. And so to me, both were wrong, <laughs> mm-hmm. but they had very strong opinions about each other. Like, oh, you're just a slime. You're doing internet leads. Like, <laughs> okay, just making money and it's happy. Go for it. And then this other side of this person's like, they think they give us good service, but then they don't know because they don't like survey their clients or know their retention rate. They just, they know they're giving good service, which is like sort of just now to like coasting your book. <laughs> I was a teacher when I came into the insurance industry and 
I came in and I'm like, gosh, I'm not really good on the phone. I'm really, really bad at sales, but I can educate. So I was like, okay, service is really easy. So I jumped on the service bandwagon and I was like, but wait a minute. I'm in service and I'm talking to customers and they need other policies. Why give those policies to someone else when I know how to write them? So let me just write them. And it was like, okay, so I I can do this. This isn't that bad. So I would do the service and sales. And then they'd be like, and then the the salespeople would be like, well, why didn't you just give it to the sales? And I'm like, why? (laughs) I give it to them when I can just do it myself. And then you realize you're not getting commission for it because you're technically a service person and you're now selling. So then you have to work, you know, with your managers and your bosses. But I totally agree with you. I think it should be service and sales because who better than the service people who know everything about the customer because they talk to the customers the most when they're doing the service to pivot and sell them something that they need because we know they need it. Well, also it helps with retention, right? So like the dirty little secret of retention is bundling and having all your policies in one place is going to insulate your retention. And it's tenfold if you add life insurance, if you add umbrella, if you add on these other policies, because now they really trust you. And so for me, I always looked at like, I love the retention game because it's so, I love both. I mean, that's the best part. Like I love my job because I get to do both (laughs) and I don't have to just think about one or the other. (laughs) You know, when you really look at like, how do you grow a a strong and stable agency? It's the attention to those details, I think. And so many agencies are so B word, B word, because they're not productive, but they're B word, which is busy for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about that. Like, oh, we don't have time for that. We don't have time for that. We don't have time for that. And I'm just always like stopping and saying, well, we haven't had time for 20 years. So when are we going to have time? You know, and Stephen, maybe you can speak a little bit to like, how you guys grew retention at Cross because you guys had some pretty crazy stats of just really thinking through how important <laughs> retention was at Cross Insurance when you ran it and, you know, what steps you took and what outcome you saw. Well, I think the first thing is we had to bring it to the team's attention. Nobody really understood the numbers in the management system because we didn't talk about them. Right, like everybody just like head down, right? Like I'm just right, doing like, the next I'm thing. Next to, I'm doing my job. Like I'm the best at what I do. And it's like, and I am a world famous swimsuit model because I decided one day that if I had one photo of me in a swimsuit posted somewhere that got one like that makes me world famous, right? AI is amazing. AI is amazing. But if we don't set a standard or we don't talk about the standard, the team doesn't know what the expectation is. And they think they're doing a great job, which maybe they are, maybe they're not. So the first thing we had to do was just start looking at the numbers and break it down and help the team understand what it meant. And then we celebrated the little wins along the way. Uh, We talked about it consistently. We reviewed the numbers and really just got into a program and routine of, hey, this is the minimum number of calls we need to make to get this result, right? And if you're doing this many calls and we're not getting the result, either I need to train you a little bit better at what to say on the call or how to handle the call, or I'm wrong and you get to prove me wrong. Yay. But through the consistency of accountability and really helping the team understand the need for the result, we were able to not only build better relationships with the clients, but they were like, oh, I just increased 12 coverages today. And I'm like, you just literally increased more coverage than you have in your entire life because you stopped and you looked and you made a recommendation for a client. And then a client would have a claim sometimes months later and they'd be like, oh, if I wouldn't have increased their rental car, they wouldn't have had a rental car. And I'm like, right. Yeah. And, and then light bulb starts going off. And then they're like, well, maybe I should offer them a renter's policy because they rent. And I'm like, maybe. So as the team was getting more comfortable and just more empowered and they were seeing the clients become a little nicer because we were paying attention to them and they were getting information streamlined way. The team got less stressed because the clients became nicer. Nicer clients. What? Clients. What? Clients. I mean, they might not agree with what's happening, but they were understanding at least what was happening. And they knew that part of the client experience is we were going to proactively reach out. They didn't have to get all Twitter painted when things were happening because we would reach out to them proactively. But to get to that point, we had to find that happy balance of what do we not service and where do we stop over servicing and where do we start freeing up some more time to be a lot more proactive. I think, too, also, we have to understand like how valuable retention is to an agency. 
the statistics of just like how much it adds to your bottom line. And we do have agencies, that, by the way, at 96% retention rate. So it is possible. Now, depending on what pockets of business you serve, any niches, there's a lot that goes into this, but you could get to 96% retention, which just basically leads that like people only leave you when they move or die or go out of business. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what, it's it makes a world of difference. And I think there's some things that are so, so easy to focus on to retain customers that we don't always think about. Like treating them like people? <laughs> Not policies. <laughs> <laughs> Not policies. So a couple of things that always come to mind when we think about how, you know, how to bump retention, I think first of all is, do we have a process for what happens when someone calls in to cancel? Oh, and yes. With the receptionist and let the receptionist go, let me send you the cancellation for because that was happening in an agency I was in. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, I want to stop here on this one for a second because I don't think we always think about this. Like, who should handle the cancellation? And a lot of times people, well, the service person. Well, what if the like they're happy to get rid of the client? <laughs> so <laughs> if you think about it, the service people, they're usually salaried or hourly. And so if they're feeling backlogged, they're feeling overwhelmed, they can find like, one reason that's logical for the person to leave, right? Like, oh, you're saving $200 makes total sense. Fine. Will you come back later? Let us know if you need anything. And like the easiest way out because they don't want to be pushy. And in their mind, well, they save money. That's obviously. And then they keep perpetuating that rate game in their head and keep going, going. And I say, I don't know if the service team is the best person to handle a cancellation. And especially in a hard market when it's hard to place business, maybe I need to take a salesperson and put them on a save team and pay them that commission because new business is hard in some markets. And, you know, if we're just letting people walk out the door and say, oh, you save money. And and I think, too, the service people believe, well, they've already bound the other policy. They've already put the down payment on. And I'm always like, so does that mean that we can't win them back? Will they pay? I go, yes, they would get a refund. (laughs) But that doesn't that doesn't mean. But then they had, but they'd have two payments for a short amount of time. But they would get a refund. Mm. Like we can save that other account, right? Like just because they said that they did it does not mean it cannot be under, undone. But service people think about loving on people, not necessarily having hard conversations. Right. Any other thoughts on that, guys? I think just, that we just need to keep in mind if we are the best one for one, we're the best one for all, and we should let our clients know that. Well, and then I think new business is great, but if you have more policies leaving than you have coming in, then you're not growing. Mm -hmm. And you need to recognize that. So that retention is extremely important because you could have more going out than coming in and you're not growing. A good point. So retention is so important. And it's also, I think it's easy. It just takes some, some thought process to it, right? Like... Like, how are we nurturing our clients? How are we keeping our name in front of them? How are we retaining them? And I think a lot of fear comes on the retention side from the perspective of like, oh, we can't poke the sleeping bear. If they know we exist, we, you know, that might be a problem. And I I think we have to get to be a little place where we have confidence in contacting people and we have confidence in making it a point and well known that this is what we're going to be doing. I also just give everybody the a point of view that when we think through retention, this is where millions of dollars of your premium already exists, right? So <laughs> I know sales is sexy and fun and like, it's great, but let's be honest, no one's selling anything insurance. If I'm saving you money and improving your coverage, I am collecting a signature. I am not really selling. And that is what 80% of insurance sales is, Okay. But right. retaining somebody is actually the hardest job to me in any any agency because we have history, we have a relationship. There's been the fights, there's been the hiccups, there's been the problems, <laughs> right? There's been the challenges, there's been the high emotes, there's been the downsides. And so relationships by nature are hard, which is why it's so fun to date someone new, so hard to stay married, <laughs> right? <laughs> Think about how many people you date, you only marry a handful, <laughs> <laughs> one two sometimes three just depends on who you are <laughs> so i think we have to realize that like keeping relationships on track is the hardest part which is why i think sometimes we don't pay enough attention to the retention game or we don't realize like okay well retaining okay but what could we do to be really extra special yeah so i want to close out this podcast with this which is can we just talk for a second like how hard it is to track a retention rate in a management system 
Ooh. Wait, are you talking premium retention, client retention, policy it, retention? It depends on which management nope. system. I mean, it, nobody, nobody it, it just gives you the pulse report with just a retention number. Unclear how or why what goes into it. Hogsoft gives you client retention over 12 months. <laughs> and there's a secret formula for that as well, by the way. Is it a secret secret or do you have the secret? No, 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 no. Customer retention rate equals current customers minus new customers within 12 months times 100 divided by something or another equals your starting customers from 12 months ago. Now, what happens if you don't like there's there's no active policies, but you don't deactivate the customer, then it could be fictitious, too. Or my favorite theory with client retention is if they have 100 policies and 99 of them cancel, except for that one watercraft, you're still at 100 percent retention. <laughs> well, I will say this for those agents there that are struggling with retention. I want to be very clear, like you have to clean up your cancellation report like we have a lot of agencies where maybe they're doing a book roll or a carrier is pulled out of a state now they have to rewrite all those policies and those are going to show up as cancellations you'll ne you're never going to get accurate retention until you can swear on the stack of bibles or whatever your religious preference that you know that that cancellation report is clean and clear because like or sometimes carriers are rewriting to a new product right and that's a new policy line they cancel the old one they keep the new one your team needs to be actively working in it. And most importantly, as we work with agencies, it's just, why did they leave? That reason code inside of your management system needs to be tight and right, because otherwise you're operating off of feelings and you have no idea why people leave. And Stephen and I worked hard on this when he was at Cross of, hey, you know what? Price with a renewal call, price without a renewal call, price with a remarket, price without a remarket. Because everyone put, you should crack me up, price, 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 move, died. Price, 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 move, died. <laughs> I go, gosh, we must be angels. We're so perfect. <laughs> and they put moved. Did they move down the street or did they move to Guam? <laughs> because they, move they moved the in our state. Did they move out of our coverage territory? We are licensed in the entire state or wherever. Did they, could we, could we have kept them? It's like, well, they moved. Well, they moved two blocks. <laughs> right. That is different than they moved. <laughs> oh, saying. So that's why we think retention is so important. I think everyone's got to keep their heat on retention right now. If you focus on it now when the market shifts, you will be ahead of the game. And that's what we saw when the hard market hit. Our agencies doing renewal review calls are crushing it right now. The agency's not. We're trying to just not die and get shriveled up like raisins. Right? Mm -hmm. Any final thoughts, guys? Pay attention to your retention. Some kind of renewal it. process is better than no renewal process. And I'm just going to tell you this. You need to spend equal parts of time, sales and retention, okay? And for those of you who think that retention is service, it's not. There's service, which is transaction service. I change vehicles, I take payments. And then there's retaining your customers, which is the higher value targets. So keep that in the back of your mind. All right, guys. Well, just so everybody knows, we're pushing retention. We do have a renewal review call program. So if you've ever wanted to get renewal review calls started and you feel as though if you go into your agency and that everybody will walk out if you tell them we're going to do renewal reviews, let us help you. And they will not walk out. And in fact, I just got off the phone with an agency last week that's been now doing it about 60 days. And they're like, amazing how few phone calls we get from cranky people. Like it's like everything clicks and they go back. So we pull everybody, guys. 93% of people who take our program would not go back to the old way of doing it. That is account managers, frontline team members. That is not agency owners. So if you're worried that when the market shifts that you're going to need help with retention, please reach out to us. We would love to help your team. We have everything from recorded videos to doing it virtually, doing it in person with a member of the APP team. So don't delay because this is my biggest fear is when the market changes, we're just going to be changing one customer for another because there'll be a lot of new business. And then there'll be a lot going out the back door. So we need to get a ha handle on that now. Right, everybody? Yes. That was so unenthusiastic, but I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. All right, everybody. I will see you in the next podcast. Thank you, guys. Thank you.